I'm Kenny Robertson, founder of the On Purpose Woman Global Community and founder and publisher of On Purpose Woman Magazine. I'm here to share the speaker portion of our Connections After Hours gathering of the On Purpose Woman Global Community. Yvonne E.L. Silver is speaking on Word Power, Five Keys to Being a More Confident Woman Using Proven Science. Yvonne E.L. Silver is CEO for Women and Wisdom Media, for women entrepreneurs seeking to flourish. She's a speaker, author, entrepreneur, executive coach, CPHR, and emotional intelligence consultant with over 30 years of experience in eight startups. As a radio show host, she is an expert in communication and sales, who, is also, who has also held senior leadership roles in global consulting and the IT telecommunications sectors. Her passion is helping women re-energize their voice, leverage their presence, and clearly showcase their value for expansive business growth. And you can find out more about her on her website, which is YvonneSilver.com. And that link is also in the text of this video. Yvonne, thank you for being with us tonight. I look forward to what you're going to share. So whenever you're ready. Thank you, Ginny. So I think I can share my screen. So <clears throat> great conversation in our room just now. And I put together some slides because Basically, I have slides already, and I think it just elevates when you've got something visual as well as listening to my, what I'm told is a lilting English accent. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and share my, my screen. Let's make sure we can all see it. Okay, and let's see here if I can just put myself in the corner there. Does that work? Is everybody seeing my screen? Yes. Yes, awesome. Okay, cool. So, so this is our topic. Let's just see if I can move this down here. There we go. Okay. So uh, I had sent through three bullet points, and then now it's ended up being five. But there's lots of content here, so I'm going to focus primarily because I know that for me, remembering through menopause, anything longer than three bullet points was not happening. So five points for me was too much. So I did three. So those three are why women make better leaders. And this is what was the advertised content. Powerful words. So what do you need to stop using? And what can you start using instead that's even more powerful? How to showcase your value so that ultimately you get bigger sales if you're in business for yourself. Or if you're internal, how that can lead to securing that promotion how to speak up for your needs. That's what this session is all about. So I've already turned off my, ca turned on my camera, so I can't see if everyone's waving, but I'm just going to assume that everyone is saying, yay, I want to learn how to speak up for, your, for my own needs in a new way. So just a little bit about me. Yes, you heard the official bio, so certified executive coach. So that's the last 15 years following a 20 year career of working as a senior HR professional, interviewing and hiring about 6,000 people in that time, um, working with a variety of different startups. So I've worked with some of the best uh, trainers and uh, transformational leaders along that, along that timeline, Jack Canfield, T. Har Becker. Um, I'm a Warrior Camp grad, if anyone knows T. Har Becker. And my passion is working with women, women entrepreneurs in particular who are seeking Came to flourish and they want to do that by having more confident conversations so I'm older than I look so yes I have 30 years of business experiences working in four countries internationally so that's the lens that I'm bringing this content today and this is just a little context because I did write a book I'll share a bit more about that in a minute and I wrote it for my mom so here's my mom on the right here's me that's my first a school photo I think I'm five <laughs> and here I am being the rebel so um that that um puff of hair at the front there it was all nicely slicked down and I took my hairband and I scrunched it and put it back on so that I could be me and that was that cheeky little grin there so I've always been a bit of a rebel so my mom just a quick story um, I grew up in London, England, and um, my dad came back from World War II with a bullet in Dunkirk. He got a bullet, grazed his forehead. He came back with PTSD, 
And as many thousands, hundreds of thousands of men were in that scenario, he didn't get any treatment. There just wasn't enough treatment for those for the, those returning veterans. So he ended up being a very angry man and he took it out on my mom, who was a originally a pro professional businesswoman, very successful. And, and yet by the time she married him and had two children, she had pretty much lost her power because she didn't have her own car anymore. She didn't have her own income anymore. And he was constantly criticizing her and belittling her. So she lost her dignity. And then he, he took the car keys and wouldn't let her drive the car after she taught him how to drive. So it was a, a very sad, ex, um, a sad experience growing up. And I ended up, well, she ended up losing her voice. And then he turned on me when I was 11 as well and yelled and screamed, I would never ever be successful in life because I flunked an exam by two marks. And I ended up losing my voice going into high school as well. So this passion, when I decided I wanted to write a book specifically for women was written to my mom, my first unmentor, dedicated to her as she showed me what not to do. And so that's what uh, that history is all about. So Words, Women and Wisdom, The Modern Art of Confident Conversations is that book. It's 44, sorry, 40 words and word concepts to help women ask for what they want and get it, not by being aggressive, but by being assertive and using powerful language. And that helps everybody to really earn what they are worth. And it hit bestseller overnight back in 2018. So I'm super proud of that book. And many of the concepts I'm going to share today draw, draw on that. And then I took that book did more speaking. So I'm out on the, the speaker stage sharing insights like this. I mean, we're doing a lot of virtual work. And ultimately, it's about helping women to become better leaders, leaders of their own life, leaders of their business, or leaders in corporate. And there's a reason why women make better leaders. We had a little snippet of conversation there about that. But here's a bit of data. So this is um, from Venga. Sorry. Volga, actually, I'm going to type it in the chat window afterwards because I'm so dry, I can't even pronounce it. So, Zenga Folkman <laughs> research. So what you're looking at on this chart is out of the Insider magazine, they, they published a study they had done looking at competencies. So you've got the male's percentage of competency of competence next to the female's um rate ranking on confidence as well uh, sorry on competence and then you can see the difference in between so things like taking initiative yeah we do that a lot better we display a lot more integrity someone talked about that a minute ago driving for results because we care we want to see the impact practicing self-development developing others motivating others building relationships these top 10 things in green are all the things that women were ranked as doing more effectively than men and those are core things that make business leaders successful so my while we rank lower on solving and analyzing problems. If you don't have people on your team, you don't have a relationship with your client, it really doesn't matter how powerful you are at solving a problem. So that's the data and that got me really intrigued. And then I started looking for some other data to say, well, what about these results? Because I'm all about helping my clients elevate their confidence by looking backwards at what they wanna brag about. Now, many people squirm at word brag, so reframe stands for brains, resilience, action, and goals. And when we brag and we talk about it in those terms, it makes a huge difference because it's about the impact of how we created the results that we wanted for our goal. So this is where we're showing that over the data from the Peterson Institute, there was a 15% increase in profitability when there was women in the C-suite. Huge, huge difference. And then McKinsey did a study as well. This was over a thousand companies. And again, when there were women and more gender diversity on the leadership teams, there was outperformance in profitability, creating new value, and obviously the cultural, cultural ethnic diversity piece as well. So there's data there. And then I know from my own experience that working with a lot of leaders, when we have authentic female leadership, 
there's less ego involved, there's more joy. We're here to create something with maximum impact. We do it by demonstrating competence. We don't just talk about it, but it's a possibility. We actually live it and breathe it and do it. We tend to ask, not tell. So use a, a naturally using a coach approach, then we use the carrot versus the stick. So we want to attract people by using honey versus the actual stick of poking at people. And that's our, our style. So that's when we become authentic. And then there was another study that I wanted to share all about building trust, which I think is so important when we start working with a new client. And how do we build trust? Three C's, so it's really easy to remember. First, we show confidence by actually doing what we said we were gonna do. So we can start our email by, as promised, here's the dot, 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 whatever it was that we promised that we were sharing with them. And we do that for the first two or three emails or two or three LinkedIn messages to reinforce the fact that not only are we competent, but we're actually doing what we said we were gonna do. We're being consistent. And we've got that competence and now we've got consistency. And the last one is caring. So we care and we show we care by actually doing something with the information that they tell us. So in corporate, it would be about an employee engagement survey that actually gathers data, but the leaders then don't do anything with it. Um, so when we're listening to our clients, when we're on our own business owner, how do we then implement the changes that they're asking for and then loop back in the conversation because you told me this, here's what we're now doing. That is showing that you care. It's not just in one ear and out the other. And that was from three PhDs in the Center for Creative Leadership. So there's all kinds of neat information I'm gonna share here, but at the end of the day, Maya Angelou said it the best, I think, is people will forget what you say, but they never forget how you made them actually feel. So when you care, that starts to be the thing that is noticed, is that you made them feel a certain way. So what are these powerful words? You're probably curious now, right? What do we stop and what do we start? So asking and negotiating, I, I am a coach, certified executive coach. So I use a coach approach anyway, but I love the question. I'm curious, how, how can we? So it's not a, will you, won't you, do you want to yes or no answer? They can't give an, a, a yes or no answer to a how question because it provokes them to think. How can we, so you're building right away, yeah, we're gonna to work together. It's the we conversation. When could we, what if? So these are all very powerful, positive words, but I very rarely use the word why, because it gets people's backs up. If you've ever been asked, you know, well, why did you do this? And why did you do that? Right away, you feel like you gotta defend yourself. And that's not a good place to start or collaborative relationship with the client. So I don't ask, you know, why are you keeping awake at night? I hate that question. You know, who wants to start there? I would much rather start with another phrase of, of appreciative inquiry, which I'll share in a little bit. So asking versus telling is what's under this little banner at the bottom here. So yes, when we ask versus coming in and saying, well, I see your problem is this, we're gonna actually have a much better result working with someone, so asking versus telling. So that's some words that we can start to include. Okay, let's, there we go. And then we've got things like should. Have you ever said to yourself, oh, I should have done this, I should have done that, or to, another, to a friend, you know, you should have done this, you should have done that. Well, should is one of those words that has this heavy tone of obligation to it. You know, it's like I'm doing it because I feel obligated to someone else. I didn't want to do it. How about we reframe it to could? And could has this energy of lightness and possibility. And hey, I could do this, I could do that, but it's a choice. It's not a, I must do this. Powerful. Take out the word just. Oh, I just wanted to do this. Well, now you just made it sound so small and insignificant that, that why would people listen to you? So take that word out because that is not elevating power. Power. And when in doubt, pause. Use a power pause. I talk about this in my book, creating a power pause statement. And it could be a, something as simple as, hmm, that's an interesting point. I want to get back to you after thinking about that. Let's book an appointment next week. 
but create a powerful sentence ahead of time that you can use, or maybe two or three, in any situation when you need to pause and catch your breath. So you're responding versus reacting, and you'll be much more in your power position then. And then the other one is about speaking first and last. If you're in a group meeting, if it's a collaborative brainstorming session, for example, set the tone by setting up the goal for the meeting and what the outcome is you're looking for, and then let everybody else speak, give their ideas, and then you're the one who wraps it up at the end. So you speak last. Now you've got all the brilliance of the room that you can synthesize as your little bow on top, and you showcase not only the value everyone else has brought, which is huge for a teamwork, but you also add your element as well, your insight. We talked about insight a few minutes ago as well. By speaking first and then speaking last. Super powerful. Oh, and then this other one, hmm, this is annoying when this is down the bottom. I'll have to fix that for the next time. I'll put it up here for now. Interesting. Let me get back to you. That was the power pause statement. Okay, so before I go on to building better sales, I'm just going to stop my screen for a minute. I just want to look out and see who's still with me. Any other powerful words or language that you use that you want to interject? Because this is an interactive conversation, right, Jenny? Anybody? Yes, since you can't see me, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I have I'd one. Add. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh oh, that's a, that's a non power word, isn't it? Uh, okay. Beep, beep, beep. Um, I was going to say that um, I, I didn't say just, but that probably wasn't very powerful of me to start out that way. I believe if you say you believe something, it's a lot more powerful than you said, than if you use the word think. I, I think something. Right. Yes. When you believe it, it comes across with a passion mm -hmm. and your personal integrity versus thinking about it, which can sound very analytical and like it's an unfinished thought and, and there's still more to add and you want to be complete and you want to be in your full integrity. Absolutely. Thanks for sharing. Anyone else before I go on to the next piece? I was going to say, interestingly enough, I was going to say what Karen said about, I don't, I've really stopped using the word, sorry. Like yes. I apologize. I will, if I've done something or if I like, if I'm late with something, um, my, my apologies for blah, 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 but I'm sorry. Just feels so defeative. That's even a yes. Word. Yes. It just, it's in my I'm book. <laughs> oh, okay. I'll say, Take it say out. Way too much. Say that way yes. too much. Take it out. It's better to say, <clears throat> I, I messed that up. I trust that you will allow me to fix that. So you're asking for permission. You're not asking for permission. You're asking for forgiveness if required. Yes. Mary, you had unmiked as well. Um, yes. It's to me, it's not, not just the words of being powerful. I think it's also the tone that you take. So yeah. if your tone is more confident, then you will get more desired outcome than if you are having any questionable in your tone so like that's one of the things i've learned lately is the tone the confidence in your tone makes people believe in what you're saying more than the lack of confidence in your tone yes so three other little things first of all always wear a jacket that has a collar right if you think about going to play golf, they don't let you just wear a round neck t-shirt. They have to have a collar on the shirt because it elevates the credibility. It elevates the style, right? People listen more, especially men, when you have a collared jacket on. The other thing is, <coughs> excuse me, about your pitch. And I write about this in the book. If you listen to newscasters, they have this booming, deep, resonant voice. They don't sound like Mickey Mouse. And um, so women naturally have that disadvantage that we got to practice our pitch, our tone. And when we talk really fast, it makes us sound nervous as well. So slow it down, say less words, use a deep tone, put on a jacket. Thank you for sharing. Yes, lots of tips there. Okay, so let's go on to the piece that a lot of people are 
intrigued about in particular, how to get better, bigger sales, better sales and bigger sales, right? <clears throat> so how do we do that? Let's go back to my little button here. There we go. Okay. So first of all, it's about some strategy. Okay. So I don't ask that question, you know, what's your biggest pain point? What keeps you up at night? I think that's so um, old hat now that, um, you know, antiquated sales techniques are teaching that still. I believe in starting with, with the energy of reciprocity. So we start with, hey, what's working really well in your business now? And people share because they're happy to share what's working well. They're excited about their business. And then how could it be even better? Because that sounds amazing. How could it be even better? And then they share a bit more. And what sometimes comes out is a natural confession point of, you know, it could be better if I had done this or I wanted to do this or if I hired this person and they self-identify that there's some sort of challenge anyway, or if they don't, that's okay. And then I say at the end, you know, that's interesting. And can I share a little bit about what I do? Because I believe that based on what you've shared, that together we could actually dovetail our services where I could help you co-create how to get to your goal faster. And no one ever says, no, I don't want to hear it because there's nothing to object to. We're talking about a future possible maybe state of collaboration and co-creation. And who doesn't want to co-create something that they've never had? It's fun, right? So that's my approach. Appreciative sales kinetic. The other thing is I use a personality science tool that focuses on specifically biology, the science, not of psychology, but of biology. And I'll share a bit more about that in a little bit. And then also sales velocity. How do you work smarter versus harder? Well, you cut down the number of conversations that you have and they don't drag out over weeks and months and months because you know what the person's personality style and preferred communication style is. So you give them what they want in conversation one. And so you can actually speed up the cycle by being uh, smart, working on sales velocity using that same psychology tool. Pretty cool. So a couple of things I wanted to share. This was actually something I shared with the real estate group as well, but they were looking to increase their sales. So first off, think about what's naturally occurring and tap into it. So right now we've got summer, we've got barbecues. You don't have to tell people it's summer, they know. And they're very appreciative of how you could dovetail your services into those, those summer cycles, or perhaps add on something special for summer. Where can you meet up with groups versus selling to one to one to one to one? Go to the group that has the number of people in the community already versus trying to build your own community. It's gonna be so much faster. <clears throat> Make sure you're really clear on your ideal client profile because that will be the basis for what you put on your website, what you put on your brochure, your business card, everything you talk about in terms of what you do. So for me, women entrepreneurs seeking to flourish. It's five words. It's pretty easy to say, well, I'm either a woman entrepreneur or I'm not. I'm either ready to grow or I'm not. And, and self-select in or out. So that's the five word summary. Who do you work with? What's the result that you get for working with that client when you're working with that client? For me, it's about seeing them flourish. And then also tapping into what are some of the everyday things that are happening in people's lives anyway? You know, are they having a new baby? Are they moving house? Are they having a, a tax moment? Um, you know, what is it that they're doing right now and tapping into that timeline and that transition point? Because when people are in transition, that's more likely when they're open to new ideas. And the other thing is reduce, reduce competition. Oh, it's so dry here. <laughs> what I mean by that is be the one who is the, the expert on the topic and teach people, the 65% who aren't ready to buy yet, teach that group something they didn't know before. And I heard um, a couple of people, <clears throat> Cassandra, um, talking about this in particular and Sandra as well, things I didn't know. So now I'm gonna go do some research, I'm curious. So when we think about teaching, we then naturally are the go-to expert that they're gonna be thinking of top of mind first because we introduce them to the idea. And that's far better than trying to compete and go for the 5% who are ready to buy today. 
takes a little longer, it takes a little more skill sometimes, but it's well worth it. So here's those two questions again, right? Simple, it's about gratitude. What's working really well for you in your business? How could it be even better? And that's two of the questions. Thank you, David Cooperwriter, for introducing us to Appreciative Inquiry. He had four questions, I just used those two. The other thing is building up your confidence muscle by knowing what you're capable of. I can sit in my confidence fully and say, not only have I worked with startups that went to 12 million, um, I've interviewed and hired 6,000 people. I've worked in four countries in internationally. I've been a VP in a global talent management firm. I also, as a coach, got my first 30 clients within my first month, which is pretty much unheard of. And so I can speak to that because I'm helping others do what I've already done, which is very powerful. So that's my own personal value proposition. I also look at how can I help my client make more money so that they can afford to pay me? Because if they're not seeing how that works, and what the ROI is on my fees, then we're not in business together. How can I help them save money, save time, decrease expenses, in addition to elevating the, the uh, revenues? And maybe that is about gaining or retaining clients, or maybe it's a product offering, or maybe it's about adding or engaging staff or deleting things that are creating turnover. So that will save the money. And fostering innovation, if we're adding a new product, what is it and why does the world need it? because there's a lot of fantastic ideas out there. We don't have to work for ourselves by an hourly rate all the time. If we have a combination of earned revenue, passive income, also have our service revenue, and we have product as well, we don't have to keep worrying about running out of hours, which we do if we have an, only an hourly rate. So the proven science part on this, I'm just checking my time here, <clears throat> is actually proven I have a study, I'm happy to share it with anyone who'd like it afterwards, let me know. How do you increase your sales by up to 300%? Who's intrigued to learn about that? So I use a system that's actually from Codebreaker. And the belief is that sales is actually not a numbers game. You don't keep calling and calling, calling, getting no's and hoping you'll get a yes eventually. It's a people game. It's about getting to yes faster by helping that person make a choice because you know what their preferred communication style is. And it's a science that's actually based on four little cards, <clears throat> which actually stand for something. B for blueprint, A for action, N for nurture, and K for knowledge, which are the four different personality types. I'll share a bit more detail about that in a minute. But the essence of it is if you think about that movie, The Da Vinci Code, Right? You've got the, the secret of the Holy Grail on a piece of parchment wrapped up in this, in this contraption, this cryptex, but there's also a little vial of vinegar in there. This is what being in business is like. Right, You only get one chance to make a great first impression. You only get one chance to open the, the vial of vinegar with the right code, um, open the cryptex with the right code, or the vial of vinegar is going to break and the secret to the Holy Grail is lost. That's what being in business is like, right? So we wanna make sure that we get it right. So Robert Kiyosaki, I think most people um, in business are aware of him, Rich Dad, Poor Dad book. Um, he says that the ability to sell, and I sometimes cross out the word sell and put in serve, is the number one skill in business. Because if we're not serving people, then they won't create referrals and our revenue stream is gonna to come to a little bit of a halt. So the Charlie Group did some research and they saw that 18% of buyers, only 18% will actually buy from someone who doesn't match their own personality type. So if we think about these two out of the four personality codes I just showed, the red and the blue on the left side are indicating two different personalities. Whereas the two on the right are both people that have knowledge, which is the green color. <clears throat> and they get along great because they understand each other. They're speaking the same language. So 82% of the time we have success because their personalities are aligned and their language is aligned versus when you deliver some sort of script to people, only 25% of the time you're actually going to get it right, which means you're leaving 30 or 75% of the sales or potential sales on the table. Like who wants to give away 
if you think about your earnings last year and you times that by three, that's what it, yeah, it could have been way more, right? So we don't want that. So bank is the, the system that I love. I found out about it about four years ago and it takes 90 seconds to do. So it's really quick online and, and it's incredibly accurate. So when I say 300%, quick how this works, if you imagine that the B line of blocks there stands for blueprint, <clears throat> imagine that that is English. We're all here in this Zoom room. We all speak English, right? So I can talk to Ginny. Ginny understands me. We talk back and forth. But if I go up one block and I start talking French to Ginny, like A is the equivalent of French, Ginny may or may not, you know, polybou français. So we're going to miss each other because we're not speaking the same language. If we add on another uh, language, like maybe German, right? And I can, you know, say, hi, you know, un beer, bitte schön. Um, one beer, please. <laughs> right? I'm adding on 200% more connection with people because I'm speaking yet another language. And then if I add on one more language, maybe it's Korean, K for Korean, which I don't know any, I won't try and quote that, then I'm actually be able to connect with 300% more connectivity because I'm speaking the language of that person. And they're all excited because they get, oh, they get me. They're speaking my language, right? So this is how this tool works to actually move the needle, to actually have better connections faster. So just briefly, and this is all online. You can see it again and capture it later. You're, you can even get your own report. I'll give you a link afterwards how to do that. <clears throat> But in, in quick speed, the blueprint personality is very process oriented. So they make decisions based on facts and figures, having a sturdy plan, a step-by-step -step process. You better bring your credentials. You better be organized. You don't be late to the meeting. And typically they are dressed very conservatively because they don't want to be wrong. They're not risk takers. So very much about titles and tradition and systems, predictability systems create predictability. Then there's the action personality of wild and crazy. They're the ones driving the Ferraris, grabbing the microphone at the front of the room, fast talkers. They get your email. They only read the top line, the bottom line. They don't read anything in between because they're way too busy and fast. And if it's not fun, they're not doing it. And if they can put a brand name to it and it's, you know, Versace or, um, you know, um, Tony Robbins is using it, great, they're all bought in. So it's all about the opportunity and how can this help me make money about winning and competition. Fast movers. Those are people you high five, you don't shake their hand, right? The relationships part is about the nurturing personality, which is my primary, uh, primary personality, all about relationships and authenticity, watching to see people grow, having teamwork, community involvement, charity, ethics, harmony, morality. And the last one is the knowledge personality. And this is the people that you cannot convince of anything. They need the facts and the figures, the data, the evidence. They need to test it out themselves and see the proof. Nothing you can say will convince them. And so they're the people that love the favorite iPad, the next iWatch, they're in line for that for days on end, um, really interested in being uh, competent and accurate and you better not make them wrong because that will lose you a friend right away. So four very different personality styles, as I mentioned, cracking a code, that's what we call it, crack your personality code. It's pretty simple because they have an online portal that it's literally nanoseconds, like less than 90 seconds, to look at these four cards, sort them in order of the one that sounds most like you to least like you. And then the two in the middle are much easier to position once you've got your like me, not like me positioned. And what I love about what they're doing is they've now got an AI piece on top. So I can write specifically, you know, create an email chain for an action nurturer or for a, a nurturer and knowledge personality. And that again, that spits out in seconds. So just so you know, um, this is not really you know, part of this presentation per se, but the slide was in there. I thought I'd leave it in, but um, it's all about receiving your own personality 
report so you can see more about your own preferred style and then also understand about the other three so that you can see how you can connect faster with people and be more respectful in your communications as well. So they're doing this um, trial right now. It's like a dollar for a 14 day trial and they're throwing in a whole bunch of bonuses. I'm happy to share more about that if anyone's intrigued by that. And then wrapping it up, because I think Gina gave me 25 minutes. Um, if you're curious to learn more um, about the book, um, I've actually got a chapter on my website under the, um, the free gift tab, chapter eight, you can get as a PDF and that's my gift. And then also if you want to find out what is my personality type, you can go to my website and there's a pop-up screen there of me and the founder who created this system. And the link is there to actually receive as a gift from me, a copy of your own personalized report just by moving the cards and putting them in order and then saying where you want it to be sent. So I put my LinkedIn profile link in before, but I'm flashing it up on the screen again. And then I put that question on this other last screen because I wasn't sure if we were gonna talk about it before or after. So that would be my takeaway to ponder, what is it that women do really well already? to use the power of their voice and how could this be even stronger for increased results? And hopefully what I've shared gives you some ideas on some things that you could take away and actually start doing bada boom right away. Thanks, Jenny. Thank you. Thank you, Yvonne. Whoops, I didn't mean to replace you there. <laughs> Where did you go? Where'd you go? Here you I'm are. I'm here. I'm um, in the gallery. Yeah, okay, let me put you back down here. I do want to ask everybody who's here with us on Zoom to unmute yourselves and let's do some applause and appreciation and gratitude to Yvonne for all this great information she gave us. So unmute yourselves and let's join me, y'all. Yes, yes, thank you so much, Yvonne. Really, really good information. And um, if you want to put anything in the chat, like where somebody can go and sign up to get their personality. If you want to put that link in there, that's fine. And I want to thank anyone who's watching this live or watching the replay. If you want to join us for one of our Zoom gatherings, go to my website, opwgc.com, where you can find out all about our community and the magazine. And be sure and check out Yvonne's website, which is also in the text of this video. Thanks for watching.